Hi, you're with James Rotman Fine Art in London, Ontario, visiting with our fabulous contemporary artist, Aidan Urquhart. Aidan, you've, uh, you've been called a art instigator by many different sources, art magazines, <laughs> uh, public Canadian art institutes. Um, what, it, what does that term mean exactly, being yeah. an art instigator? Well, I think primarily it, it uh, stems from the mail art and fax art projects that I've done in the past, for the past 20 years or so. And by that I mean I would take an image and it'd be eight and a half by 11 on a standard sheet of paper, or 11 by 17 if it was a mail art project, and I'd work on an image in black and white with different text in it, and it would be just an, a different uh, project idea. Each one was different. Some of them might have been about the seasons, some of them were about these uh, these marionettes that I found in an antique store that were kind of like they lost their limbs and their mouth, the jaw part was gone. And so I would take these these uh, for the facts art one. I would have a whole listing of addresses across Canada and USA, and I would just set, at night I would fax the image through to these galleries, various galleries and museums. So were they just public art galleries? Yeah, public art galleries yeah, and okay. museums, and they would yeah. just get the the image and. Uh, and it, for me, it was a way to kind of bypass the, the normal gallery system where you're not uh, waiting for a curator to come invite you into a show and you're not right, waiting right. on the gallery director or the gallery system where you can just go direct with your you self-direct your own projects and fax them to the fax machine or get them masked, photocopied, folded up and put it in envelopes, stamped, labeled and out, the, out in Canada post it goes. That's neat. Handling your work for the last few years, I've noticed a continuity of symbols, ideas, and references running through your work. Can you share with us some of the topics or subjects that influence your ideas for art making? Yeah, for sure. I think it's uh, a lot of it's just daily living and going, coming across different ideas, images that I might see, whether it's on the television, on the internet, uh, a billboard, an advertisement that I might see in the street, or a book from a book, or. Uh, or even just uh, like what well, I've used in the past, this old marionette that I called the Gourd Man, and he's giving me these, now these these faces from 1998. Right. But the actual uh, object came out of a trunk in a funeral home in Niagara Falls, where my grand uh, my dad grew up. Right, right. So and I still have that marionette, but it's kind of like I get onto a classic image, whether it be that the marionette doll or the the rotary dial phone image that I came across an old rotary dial phone in Banff doing an artist residency there right. in 2000 and I've used that all the way up to the present with the paintings that you have on, right. on view now uh, the, the, so I kind of recur the motif that I also also used a an image of a mad dog found in a, a Canadian health journal from 1860 and it was an image of what would be a rabid dog and just if you see such an animal stay away from it so I took it away from its original etching style draw, draw, drawing and kind of reduced it down to just the basic shape with some of the lines for the ribs, and you also have one of those works yeah, it's on your site cool. as well. I like that piece. Thank you. So I kind of like uh, it's a, and uh, so these things recur. I, I come across an idea, but then I'll cannibalize myself, and by that I mean it could be years later that I bring that image back in, or or the dog image, and redo it or re-contextualize it in some way in a new piece. Right. So it becomes an aspect of the past in the, in the newest work. Uh, so and, and I think if. That's probably a, a thing that uh, is common to most artists, that they right. kind of look back at what they've done and while they're going forward. Aiden, in your most recent paintings, you know, the Calling You series, mm -hmm. with the, you know, the, that group of eight paintings, uh, those vertical paintings with the rotary phone on, yep. the, on the bottom of each image. I mean, there just seems to be so many different ideas running through those paintings, so layered. I'm um, just wondering if each, you know, like there seems to be like different shapes, synapses, yep. like, you know, integrated into those works. Do they have some kind of meaning behind the yeah, visual? Because, because each, each one will have its own, as you know, you're alluding to, it has a different background or what's going on in the background. And I, the overall thing I was thinking about is communication and how wide open that is. And what makes you tick as an artist? Like, what internal or external forces drive you to create art and objects? So I'm kind of driven to explore and research multiple different ideas. And sometimes there's material that I'll have gathered, 
but I may not use, or there's material that I've gathered and I may not use till 30 years later. And that's in some of those works that you have at, on your website where I put the nameplates of cars, I've wedged them into the some of the works, like oh. Pontiac or Buick, and I've got a few other works that, that, that you don't have that have right. done the same thing. And these were materials that I ripped off of actual cars from an auto records yard over 35 years ago. And I just went with the, with the, pli with the pliers and pulled off the name tags of cars. And it was again, sat in a box for almost 35 years and now they've seen the light of the day. Now I can use the material. Right. But I'm always gathering and I find it, it's a, kind of a really dynamic thing to be able to get, to gather objects, ideas, whatever it might be. And that's kind of what kind of keeps me focused and keeps me driving forward. Right. I mean, for a lot of people, I mean, your, your works are really multi-layered, multi-textured. Um, how do you know when a work of art is finished in your eyes? It's a gut instinct. It's a gut thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen it before when I, I, there'd be certain, like on this painting in particular, I had five layers of off whites to try to get to what I felt was snow that right. was right in my eye. And it still wasn't right until I realized that if I use small little circuit of white hole punches from an office, they, they dump them out, they hole punch things and there's just bags full of them. Right. So I took those and minutely glued each little circular white hole punch on the work. And then I, then for example, that that's done. I could see that now that was what I needed, Right. but it was a struggle to go for weeks on end to multiple, as I mentioned, multiple kind of versions of off-whites. Right, right, right. But well, I still enjoy the process. The process is a big thing with me too. It's, it's not, uh, I don't find it to, to be tedious or like that was, that was hours of gluing little white dots on. Somebody might think, well, this guy's pretty weird to be doing this. Right. But I love the process. Right. Because it gets me towards that end result.